Okay, so there is a new tool for Pix and Sight Out uh, called Blur Exterminator, and there's a link in the description that you can go to and get more information. You can get a free trial, or you can even purchase it. But I think uh, after you watch this video, I think you're just going to run out and purchase this for your Pix and Sight workflow because it's just completely amazing. It's really fabulous stuff that uh, Russ Croman has uh, uh, done with this, um, and it, it is a game changer for sure. Uh, if you've ever struggled with convolution in your um, image processing workflow this is going to simplify it amazingly the uh, artificial intelligence does an amazing job in analyzing the image and uh, in uh, applying deconvolution to it and improving the stars in the image as well so and it can work on both color data and monochrome data in fact you're going to want to apply it to both so uh, if you have monochrome data uh, like a luminance channel you're going to want to apply it there and then if you have a color stack of RGB channels, um, you're going to want to apply it to that image as well. Same holds true for one-shot color images. You're going to want to apply it to your one-shot color image. But like I said, make sure you apply it early on in your workflow. If you don't have Blur Exterminator, uh, the first thing that you're going to probably want to do is uh, get a free trial or uh, purchase it. You can click on Blur Exterminator and you can get a free trial and you can purchase it and get support and so forth. Um, talks a bit about it here so that uh, you get a little insight uh, on the, uh, uh, what, what Blur Exterminator can do for you, which is uh, pretty cool, uh, give it a purchase. Uh, if you are just want to jump right in and, and make use of it, because I think you will, like I said, after, uh, after you see the results uh, that I show you. Okay, so uh, back in Pix and Sight, um, I've got the uh, Blur Exterminator tool open. Um, I'm not going to go into how you install Blur Exterminator because Russ actually has instructions that he provides you when you purchase it um, or get the free trial, how to install it, and it's really simple to do. So uh, I'm not going to cover that. That's already been covered. Um, but what I will uh, point out is process. It, it, you can find Blur Exterminator under Process and uh, uh, Deconvolution right here. Deconvolution, you'll find Blur Exterminator. Terminator. So when you open it up, um, it'll be default, of course. Um, I'm using some custom parameters here, but uh, if you open it up, default is uh, like this, uh, with the stellar adjustment set to sharpen the stars at 0.25, uh, no adjustment for star halos, um, automatic PSF is selected, and uh, none of the options are selected. So now you can run this uh, as it is and get a fairly good result. Um, this is a preview here that I did. Uh, this is a preview window of a, a larger image. Um, that I have some H alpha. This is H alpha data. You can use uh, Blur Exterminator on color data too, of course, and you're going to want to. You're going to want to apply it to your color data and also your, your uh, um, narrow band data as well. So um, this is H alpha data that I took of M20 and I haven't processed this. Um, it is best to apply Blur Exterminator early on uh, as early as possible in your workflow. So what I am doing now, I adjusted my workflow a little bit to accommodate Blur uh, Exterminator. And what I do is I will take my master uh, image and I will crop it and I'll apply a background extraction to it. And then I will apply Blur Exterminator that would probably be the best way to approach it that gets it into the workflow very early on and that's before i do anything like color calibration or stretching it or, or anything else that i do in my workflow mixing channels anything like that you don't want to do that so you're going to apply blur exterminator to your one shot color image or your rgb combined image and you're going to apply it to your narrow band images as well your h alpha and your o3 and so forth um, for LRGB, I should point out uh, for LRGB images that you're going to want to apply it not only to the RGB combined but to the luminance. Now, there are some cases where you might be able to get away with just applying it to the luminance image. That was typically how we worked our workflows uh, for Pix and Sight. Uh, at least my workflow was to do any uh, deconvolution uh, and sharpening and so forth on the luminance image and then add that 
that into the RGB combined uh, image. Um, but in this case here, you're going to want to, if you're using Blur Exterminate, you're going to want to apply it to the RGB color image and you're going to want to apply it to your luminance uh, image as well if you're uh, doing LRGB imaging. So let's just go back here to Pix and Sight. Uh, so let me just give you a quick example here of how this works before I go into any other uh, details on it. Um, so this is just out of the gate and uh, I made a preview box around the, uh, the center of uh, M20 here so we can see it. And if we just use the uh, defaults that uh, are set for Blur Exterminator, uh, we can apply it to our image and it goes pretty quick. Um, I found that it works pretty fast and we get uh, we get a, a nice result uh, overall, I think. Um, very, uh, very good result. So we go from this, which is blurry, to a very sharp, crisp image that the resolution has been restored on it. Um, and the details are quite fabulous with it. We can see uh, what it's doing here with the uh, dark nebula. Um, this is before, and this is just as it was captured. So this could be um, poor, uh, in this case, it could be collimation issue, uh, in, or it could be a, um, a seeing issue, turbulence, air turbulence and stuff like that caused this. This was taken on a reflector type of telescope. Um, so, you're going to have a number of things that can actually influence the quality of your image and, and how crisp and, and clear it looks. Blur Exterminator does a fabulous job of cleaning it up, as you can see. Uh, really, really amazing stuff. So we go from uh, a very blurry, uh, dark nebula region to some fantastic details being revealed in it. Um, so I, I, I think that works. Uh, I think Blur Exterminator is uh, just for that simple part of it right there is just amazing. So tell me in the comments what you're thinking about Blur Exterminator. Is this a really incredible tool to have in your arsenal, to have in your workflow within PixInsight? Let me know in the comments below what you guys think. One thing that I will point out is... Russ actually says this too that you get a you can get a better result by fine tuning your PSF per, uh, diameters, uh, your your PSF so automatic PSF will attempt to determine the, the PSF of the stars in your image, uh, but if you can actually narrow that down and, and get in the zone and tweak it a bit yourself, uh, you're, you'll probably get a better result. Um, and I found that it uh, uh, did help to actually do a manual PSF uh, versus using the automatic PSF. So uh, in order to do that, we need to know what the PSF of the image is, um, of the stars in the image. And uh, you, can, you can use uh, two tools. Um, you can use a script that's uh, inside uh, PixInsight for uh, image analysis called uh, full width, half max, eccentricity. You can run that, but it only works on grayscale images. So, and that's fine, that would work on my H alpha image here. That would give me my, uh, my uh, uh, median value for a full width half max uh, for the PSF. But there's also another way to determine the PSF for your image, and that's using a uh, script that uh, is by Hartmut Bornemann. Uh, I hope I pronounced that right. Uh, let me just close that. Um, I'm going to switch to my preview so that it works faster. Uh, it still gives us a, a good idea of our full width half max. Uh, we can determine an average and then tweak that. We get in the zone and tweak that. Uh, but if you go to utility, uh, sorry, you go under uh, render and PSF image, if if you have the PSF image script installed, that is, and you can download that from, uh, there is a website, I'll put a link to it in the uh, description so that you can go and download this if you wish. Uh, but PSF image uh, pop up, leave it at uh, default and uh, click evaluate and it will go to work and evaluate the uh, full width half max values for X and Y uh, in our image. And it goes pretty quick on a preview I found in the preview. Um, the numbers are, are still in the same zone uh, as, a, as if you did it on the full image. You can, you can run this script on the full image. It'll take a little longer for it to do, but I ran it on the preview because it's a little faster and the values are still giving me a good indicator as to uh, where I want to be uh, with regards to my PSF diameter.
So um, in this case here, we can see that uh, the full width half max of X is seven point, let's just say 7.5 and Y value is six. So we could go in the middle, we could go 6.75 or seven say, just to just to sit somewhere in that, that mid zone uh, for things. So that gives us, uh, gives us our PSF value. And if we uncheck automatic PSF, we can now adjust, we can use the slider or we can just simply input. So if I go and input say 675 as my PSF diameter, I'm gonna leave the sharpening of the non-stellar at 90. You can adjust this, it'll sharpen less or more uh, depending on uh, what you need for your image. Um, I'm just gonna leave it at the default and I'm not selecting anything else. Uh, we're sharpening the stars by 0.25, which is the default and we're not uh, adjusting anything with regards to halos. Okay, so let's apply that to our uh, preview window here and we will get the result in just a second. All right, so there's our result. So that's pretty uh, pretty fantastic stuff and that's dialing in the PSF. So we're getting, uh, we're getting some really fantastic details emerging in the uh, nebulosity and also the stars are being nicely corrected. Um, star reduction um, and also uh, the stars are uh, nice and pinpoint, uh, much better looking, more focused looking than they were in the original image. So the other really cool thing that Blur Exterminator can do is it, as I mentioned already, is it can help improve your stars, but it really does a fabulous job. So I wanted to demonstrate this just really quickly for you. Uh, if we go back over to PixInsight, um, we can see here that we've got uh, these stars in this image. Uh, there's a lot of color fringing occurring with them. Uh, uh, we, we can clearly see that so we want to um, we want to see what blur exterminator can do uh, to improve those stars for us and I think that you'll be quite uh, amazed with it so what I did here I've got blur exterminator open um, I've got it at the default of uh, 0.25 for sharpening the stars no halo um, uh, adjustment being done and I've already uh, checked the uh, PSF uh, for it which I've set at 5 uh, no options are selected I'm simply going to apply it and see what the result is. So I'm going to apply it to this preview here and we can see the dramatic difference in the stars, how it's uh, removed the color fringing from the stars and uh, left them nice and sharp and pinpoint looking compared to how they were previous. So uh, if you have images that are suffering from uh, stars that aren't quite as good as you would like or had hoped that they would be, uh, Blur Exterminator might be able to help you and uh, improve those stars and, uh, and over improve your overall image for you. So as I mentioned, Blur Exterminator can be applied to not only your monochrome data, but also your color data, which is uh, either your one-shot color image or an RGB channel combined uh, image. Now, uh, this image here that I'm going to show you uh, is of the Horsehead and Flame Nebulae, and it is one-shot color image that I took. Um, and we just want to look at what Blur Exterminator can do on this image here. So as it's stands right now this image is not um not been processed in any way. I've simply got an auto stretch on it. Um, I've cropped it and I have uh, done a dynamic background extraction on it. So uh, let's have a look at what it, uh, what Blur Exterminator can do though. But uh, so I, I have a preview window that I put around the uh, flame nebula anyways, because it's got uh, uh, the, the flame nebula in particular has a lot of great detail that can really uh, show off the uh, uh, capabilities of Blur Exterminator um, in improving the, uh, the quality of your images so um, let's just uh, uh, have a look here the first thing that I want to do is I want to determine um, what my uh, PSF should be so I'm going to go back to script render PSF image and again you can also uh, use the uh, full width half max eccentricity tool uh, in uh, PixInsight as well to uh, get this value but I'm just gonna run this on a on a preview window it'll give me a, a rough idea of the zone that I want to be in for my PSF and uh, that will be displayed here after it's done evaluating the uh, the area of the image that I've chosen. All right, so it shows us that uh, we've got about a two. Our full width half max is two here. So we are going to use that value 
right here. I, um, I've actually already got something close to it. Uh, whoops, not 200. We want two. Er, whoop, two zero zero. There we go. All right. So now let's apply this to the uh, preview where the flame nebula is and we'll see what kind of result we get. So here's, this is before and this is after. So that's before and that's after. So as we can see, if we zoom in a bit more here, we can see that we're getting a lot of clarity, a lot of improved resolution and sharpness uh, with regards to the details uh, within the nebula itself. So there's before and there's after. So I think you'll agree that this is a pretty amazing uh, piece of work here that uh, Russ has produced with this blur exterminator tool and its capabilities. The other thing I'd like to point out too here uh, within this is you'll notice that the noise in the image is not being uh, enhanced at all. It's not being affected by what blur exterminator is doing. The uh, artificial intelligence, the AI of blur exterminator is smart enough to know that it's not going to sharpen or de de on the uh, the noise in the image so uh, if you look at this dark area right here and I'm flipping back and forth between uh, before and after uh, you can see that the the noise in the image is not being affected just the details just the the details that we want to enhance are being uh, dramatically improved and here's another color image uh, this is uh, RGB channels combined uh, to produce this color image and let's have a look at what uh, well we're, we're gonna focus in on the uh, center of M20 here where this dark nebula uh, region is and uh, we're going to just go to preview one and before actually before we do that let's just go back and we will get a rough idea for our PSF so I'm just going to use preview two and we'll go to script render PSF image and click evaluate and it will let me know the values for X and Y in a second. So uh, eight and seven almost. So if we go, if we did about 7.5, that would be a, a nice spot to start with that we can work with and tweak. So we're just going to uh, input 7.5 here for our PSF. All right, so there we go. So now let's go back to preview one and we will see what Blur Exterminator can do. So again, uh, this is pretty much defaults except for the PSF value. Uh, PSF values I've, I've manually entered. We're just going to apply it to this area and we'll see the results. So there we go. So this is before and this is after. It's before and this is after. So this tool is really amazing. It does an excellent job of deconvolution of an image, uh, the non-stellar components as well as the stellar components. Okay, that's it for this video. Thanks very much for tuning in. Don't forget to like and comment and subscribe, all that good stuff. It helps the channel grow and I really appreciate it. It makes me feel good. Okay, thanks again. We'll see you soon. Take care and clear skies.